Senator McCosk. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Gentlemen, thank you for being here today. Thank you for your leadership and um, just deep appreciation for the extraordinary professionalism that we see out of our, our Air Force, all of our military, as we saw uh, things executed literally uh, <clears throat> before our eyes over the weekend. So just thank you for that. I, I want to ask a little bit this morning about the, the E-7 and the termination, uh, the the 26 budget request seeking to terminate this acquisition program that's slated to replace the E3 sentries. You've heard me before uh, talk about uh, the need, certainly up in, in, the, in the north. Um, uh, we just haven't heard, in my view, sufficient justification for the cancellation of, of such a critical program. Um, we hear all the time how the E3 fleet is, is barely operational, it's kind of limping along. Uh, I do understand, I've, I've, I've had the conversation about uh, the intent to shift towards space-based um, AMTI, uh, supposedly by 2027, and then using the Navy's E2 as a stopgap. Um, I'm told that the E2 can't match the E7's capabilities. And then when it comes to the AMTI, we heard from uh, uh, General Gutlein, he estimated the capabilities might only, his, his words were, start coming online in the early 2030s. Um, uh, General Alvin, you have underscored previously to me the, the E7's superior role over the E3. And, and then General Saltzman, in prior comments, you've agreed that space offers advantages but isn't optimized for the full military spectrum and have advocated for basically a mixed capabilities approach. So General Alvin, can you, can you detail for us um, uh, any concerns that you may have on the gaps terminating the E-7 program uh, presents? Well, well, Senator, I think you uh, appropriately characterized the challenges that we're having with the E-3. And I will acknowledge that the, the E-7 is a far superior aircraft in its uh, capabilities to the E-3. I think as we look at um, multiple phenomenologies, as we discussed multiple domains, uh, that fell in, into the realm of, of difficult decisions that were made uh, by the Department of Defense. And we'll have to look forward in the future on how we would stitch together those and ensure that we would mitigate any gap based on the Do you worry, decisions. though, about the fact, I mean, stitching together to fill the gaps if it works, but we don't want to be uh, operating off of a, of a wing and a prayer here. Um, are you comfortable with the fact that we'll be able to stitch these gaps? Well, Senator, we'll certainly work as hard as we can on that. We, we will look to that and, and look at the, the ability and how fast the phenomenologies from the other uh, domains will come on, and we, we will deal with the, these hard decisions that were have to be made by the Department of Defense. General Salzman, can you speak to that just in terms of when you might expect the delivery of the space base AMTI? Well, we're already evaluating data uh, to include our own kind of government-based evaluations of the data, uh, as well as what uh, some of the vendors are telling us the data looks like. It's promising. Uh, and then you have to put together the right contract vehicle to launch the satellites in a time and place. So I think by the end of the decade, you will start to see capability delivering data. I won't say that that's accomplishing the mission uh, by 29. Uh, I think General Gutlein's assessment that this is an early 30s delivery of a real capability is not too far off. Yeah. Just recognizing the, the very tenuous situation that we are in right now and the need, the need um, truly for speed on, on all of this, uh, we get that, but we've got to be honest. If we're going to be facing some gaps that are going to allow for a level of exposure, we're talking about spending a lot of money on a lot of different uh, initiatives that are quite significant. Um, but we've got to have the ability to go from A to B before we go from A to Z here. I, I want to ask you a, a, a question. Uh, Mr. Secretary, and this relates to the micro reactor pilot. Um, finally, after way too many years here, um, we've got another um, notice of intent to award for the Eielson micro reactor project. Um, it's good news. It's long overdue. We all we all get that. Um, I know that the initial 
goal was to have this demonstration reactor operational by 2027. Uh, every time I've asked, I get the, well, we're on schedule. Well, you can't be on schedule if you haven't even had a notice of award yet. So can you give me what you believe is a more realistic deployment schedule? And, and hopefully that the department has a strategy for scaling the micro reactor deployment beyond Ileson. I think this is gonna be absolutely key for us to meet our energy needs, whether it's in Ileson or ADAC or wherever in the world you may be. I, I, I agree, Senator. This is gonna be a critical capability in many locations that we have to operate in um, that, that local power just is not available or not reliable or, or expensive or, or we impart challenges on the local communities when we do come in. Uh, so I agree 100% with you. Um, I, I have to, I'm a little bit at a loss because I was in, under the impression that we had actually had announced that we made a selection and that we were we, we had awarded a contract. Or on, on I, I will get back to you on the specific details of that contract, uh, but we are still looking at 27. Uh, you know, the contractor is just spinning up. We're still getting some of the specific details, but we are still looking at a 27. Uh, but I will get back to you, Senator, uh, if you, there's can anything. Can you get um, back to me with yep. more more accuracy to that? Because we're told um, that it has it has issued. The Air Force has issued another notice of intent to award for the project, um, and and again that it's still 2027. Yeah, I'll, I'll get to the specifics of where the contract state is, um, but I believe it's still 2027. Okay, I'm 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 thinking this is still wish and a prayer, but. I want you. I want you to to stick with that 2027 I, I, date. I, I, I'm probably not going to bet a week's salary on that, on that <laughs> senator. But uh, but but you know, there uh, we have a lot. Of, the contractor, we have a lot of confidence in the approach, uh, and and we are. We, the important thing is we're off to the races now, and and, and we're moving out. I look forward to a follow-on. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.